Are we? This is the new Excellent Men, issue 45. It's chapter 8 of the Messi Aya Compel X crossover story. It's got a great cover by David Fincher, the director of Zodiacs and Fighting Club. This book and this old crossover were great. And I'm going to be talking about how we got to this point, this crossover, and a lot about the kind of shitty office politics that the excellent men were suffering from just prior to this run. Also, this is officially a Christmas video because there is snow in this one. Look at all that snow, it's definitely Christmas. The plot for most of this crossover is simple. There's a newborn mutie baby that all the baddies want to kill, but Cables is protecting it. And the excellent men, they're chasing after Cables because they want to protect the baby as well. Here we have got Lady Shiva, and she has got a bunch of anti mutie bigots with her, and they want to kill the baby. But then the new excellent force team show up to fight them all. It's not very clear with the art here, but we have got Thunderman, Pogo, Wolfman, Calabac, X-32, and then right in the page gap, bang on in the gutter space, we have got Wolf's Girl. This was the new version of Excellent Force that they introduced in this story. But hey, let's start talking smack about Marvel writers and editors, because... The Excellent Men books were dog shite before this. What happened was, in 2004, Van Morrison left Marvel, and he stopped writing The Excellent Men, and Marvel, they scrambled around to find someone to replace him. Not just as a writer, but to effectively curate the whole line of Excellent Men books, just like he had done. Unfortunately, they got Joshua Whedonson. They really fell out of themselves to sign this big shot TV writer and get him to write the flagship Excellent Men book and they for them exactly what Van Morrison had just done for them. Some people really like Joshua Whedonson's run. I didn't. It's incredibly bland at best. It's nothing special. Uh, the art is nice, but the stories are awful. But the problem was, Marvel, they went all in on Joshua Whedon's son. And they gave him the keys to the old franchise, but he just wasn't really that interested in driving it. The other excellent men books, some of them, they had good writers like Spike Milligan. And others had awful writers like Christopher Claravoyant. But all the other books, they were basically cock-blocked from doing anything meaningful or innovative because they weren't considered the main excellent man book by Marvel. Joshua Whedonson, his book, that was the main one. That was the important one. That was the one where all the new, exciting, fresh ideas had to happen first. Uh, also, before I continue prattling on, a great thing going on here is we're getting nice little character moments for just about everyone. Like here, we've got a wolf skull bit that's really good. And then on the next page, surprisingly, we've got a really good Wolfman moment. And Wolfman, he's someone who I didn't think has been written all that well since Van Morrison. But here we go. The big set piece for this issue, as you saw on the cover, it's X-32 versus Lady Shiva. But to get back to the tangentially related morning, what happened with the Excellent Men books was Joshua Whedonson not only didn't do for the franchise what Marvel were open for, i.e. leading the way and pushing the other books in the new directions, he was also consistently late. He was always missing deadlines. Almost every issue was delayed. I think there were maybe like three issues of his Excellent Men run that actually shipped on time. 
And by the end, the delays between issues were like months and months. And then what happened, halfway in a Whedonson's run, was some more absolute bullshit. Where Michael Bay and Benson, who wasn't even writing any excellent men books, he was just allowed to instigate an enormous line-wide change to the whole franchise. He depowered nearly all the muties at the end of his House of Must story. And I do have my own theories about that that I won't get into here. But the thing was, Whedonson never acknowledged this enormous game-changing event. He clearly was meant to. Marvel wanted him to. They wanted him to take the franchise to new heights and they were pinning all their hopes on him coming out and tackling House of Mur with some new idea and him having a final say on the matter. But he didn't. He never acknowledged it. And the result was that the other excellent men books, they weren't really allowed to get into this enormous event that affected every single one of them. They just paid like auto lip service to the incident. They weren't allowed to explore the nature of it or anything like that. Joshua Whedonson, he was meant to do that and he never did. Uh, we have got a fucking fantastic Emma Frosty's bit here. She is written perfectly. Uh, but yeah, what happened was, after three years of waiting around for Whedonson... Marvel just gave up on them. They gave up expecting them to do anything. So they just let the other books and their creative teams, uh, most of them were new creative teams by this point, they let them acknowledge all the muties losing their power and do these big storylines about it. It was only slightly bad that this stuff was suddenly being addressed like two years after it happened but we had we had that excellent man book the rouge team that was really really good uh, we had this the new excellent men which was great and these books they all went head first in their painting summit on this broken canvas they interjected some actual momentum and motivation and excitement into the books and they tied together a lot of loose ends and characters. Uh, the best comparison I can think to make is that uh, this, it was kind of like this era's executioner's agenda. It was the payoff to a whole bunch of subplots and ideas. And it's just really good. Uh, the excellent men books from about 2007 to 2010... They were like the best they could be. They had a purpose. They had a really great stable of characters and creators, uh, writers and artists. Uh, we got some more stuff with Wolf's Girl here. Then we've got a bit with Thunderman here. And then Calabac, he takes a bullet for Thunderman and he dies. And that would actually be a criticism I would throw at the books from this period. They were far too kill happy. Characters were always dying. And I do get that it added a lot to the sense of urgency and stuff like that. But every other story, you had three to four secondary characters dropping dead. Uh, this is great though, Thunderman. He is really sad that his friend has died. And then X-32, she gets to beat Lady Shiva and it's personal revenge. Because Lady Shiva, she impaled X-32's boyfriend, Hellion Keller. And that is another great thing about these books. Characters like X-32, or Hellion Keller, or Calabac, or Thunderman. They were being held up alongside Wolfman, or Cables. And it wasn't like we had the big excellent men characters, and then a bunch of second stringers. It was like they were an enormous ensemble cast and they were like a family. I mean, they were still duds, but they really felt like they were making the excellent men into a big diverse team of about 
30 to 40 different muties. In the words of Dead Rising, fan fantastic. I recommend New Excellent Men from issue 20 to issue 46, which I think was the final issue. Uh, I recommend that other Excellent Men book with Rouge. Uh, I recommend virtually every Excellent Men book that springs up between this crossover and coming second. You have this really almost beautiful tapestry. Uh, then it went all the shit after coming second. I rate this a jolly old seven thumbs up.